Next on BYUSN, no championship Tuesday for BYU basketball. Where exactly did it all go wrong for the Cougars in Las Vegas? Plus, is there a case for BYU to make the NIT? There's always a case. It's just a matter of if the committee will take it or not. Is it a good case? <laughs> is there anybody on the jury that takes BYU in the NIT? Welcome to BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is Tuesday. March 7th, we are live once again in the Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. Alongside Jerem Jordan, I am Spencer Linton. Hard to believe that just over nine years ago, we launched this show on TV in this arena, and now it kind of feels like the end of an era. It really is uh, with BYU and the West Coast Conference. as a basketball school, right? Finished uh, yesterday, unfortunately. This, this is a bummer Tuesday. We were feeling good yesterday. Hey, yeah. there's a chance. <sighs> Yeah, it, it all kind of came crashing down. It came crashing down. Uh, last night was tough for uh, the the women in the afternoon and the men at night. And uh, Gonzaga, St. Mary's for the ship. Yay, good for them. They're <laughs> back again. Good job, guys. <laughs> good luck after this. Hey, um, we're undefeated, yeah. and so we're going to bring it today on Championship Tuesday. Uh, okay, yeah. Um, on, yep. on today's show, our one-on-ones with Mark Pope and Lee Kamard after the games yesterday. New quarterback Keaton Slovis after his first practice as a Cougar. More drama in the Pac-12, Big 12 uh, conversation, plus the top five moments from this year's West Coast Conference Tournament. But first, today's headlines. Beginning with, yes, BYU men's basketball. Losing to St. Mary's 76-69 in the WCC Tournament semifinals. The Cougars trailed by 26 points in the second half and cut it all the way down to three before falling short. Spencer Johnson led BYU with 13 points. Richie Saunders, nice tournament. He had 11. Head coach Mark Pope pinpointing another slow start as his team's biggest issue on Monday night. It just, it just wasn't us, and we knew it. Um, our guys knew it. Uh, it. It's no lack of try from our guys. It's just... Um, we just, um, man, we had a tough time. We had a tough time working our way into this game tonight. Women's basketball is to Gonzaga, 79-64 in the semifinals as well. Nani Falatea led the Cougars with 17 points on 4 of 18 shooting. Emma Calvert had 13. Lauren Gustin, 9 points, 9 rebounds, giving her 400, or 532 for the season. Seventh most in a single season in NCAA Division I history. Amazing. Ariel Mackey Williams says the Zags defense was an issue. Um, yeah, I mean, i got to give credit to Gonzaga, first of all. They came out today in their game and they executed. So um, I think that's just where we kind of downfall in our game and stuff like that, especially with our turnovers. Um, I think just a lot, of the, a lot of us were just sick and guessing and playing kind of robotically. We just weren't kind of flowing how we normally do. So I think that kind of impacted us. At 16 and 16 overall, the Cougars are likely done for the season. BYU football spring practices have now begun. It was a good Monday in that regard. Marking the first <laughs> official time, new BYU quarterback Keaton Slovis publicly played and practiced in a BYU jersey, and he clearly enjoyed the first day. Great job of like protecting the quarterback, very quarterback friendly, and uh, puts you in a position to get you in a rhythm and operate. Um, even like, I think the first period was like, uh, like run actions, play action, run period. Uh, we didn't have a great rhythm, but we kind of found it like a period later. And I think that's kind of testament to the offense is um, you might not have, you might not hit a touch on every play, but uh, you're going to find a rhythm because of the way it's set up. High praise from Caden Slavis. Love to hear that. A few position changes revealing, or revealed rather, in the initial roster release. Of note, Soljay Maiava Peters is now officially a running back. We had heard that was going to happen. Morgan Piper moves from linebacker to running back. Ammon Hanneman moves from safety to linebacker, and Tanner Wall moves from wide receiver to safety for the Cougars. Men's volleyball stays ranked eighth in the ABCA coaches poll for the fourth week in a row. The Cougars are 10 and 6 overall, hosting number 15 Ohio State Friday and Saturday at 9 Eastern on BYU TV. Saturday is Top Gun night, by the way. That's going to be fun. I love it. I might go just for that. <laughs> oh, wait. I'm oh, wait. Calling you're the calling match. both those matches. Yeah. <laughs> you should probably show up. 
Oh, the 80s references are going to be so crazy. Oh, that's basically Steve Bale. Yes, Steve is very excited. <laughs> BYU baseball plays tonight at Utah Tech. The Batcats, 4-7 and seven thus far this season. First pitch, 8 Eastern live on BYU Radio in St. George. Jason Korth is the WCC softball pitcher of the week. After a 15-strikeout performance against UNLV last week, that tied a single-game school record. She also pitched 7 and a third scoreless innings against Portland State and Idaho State. BYU men's golf competing at the REL Lampkin Invitational yesterday and today. BYU currently in 12th place after two rounds. Max Brenchley playing the best of any of the Cougars right now. He's tied individually for 17th at one under par. Women's golf day two at the Julie Inkster Meadow Club Collegiate. The Cougars are in seventh after round one, led by Kirsten Fotu, who is one under. Congrats to women's golf. Keep it going. Former BYU basketball players Eric Mika and Zach Selyus doing work in their respective leagues. Mika with the G League Ignite, based in Henderson, Nevada, of all places, had 20 points, 16 rebounds, 8 assists for his team against the Raptors 905 in Toronto. He said they were going to go to Drake's house, but he just wanted to take a nap instead. Uh, I was like, come on, go to Drake's house. He sounds like a guy who's got a kid and a <laughs> wife who's pregnant with another kid. Zach oh, he's Selyus. in Toronto. Yeah, come on, go. Zach Selyus, 20.6 rebounds and three assists to lead the Tigers tubing in against Giants Dusseldorf in Germany. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. What's Trending presented by Bodyguards. Protection for a life worth living. Learn more at Bodyguards.com. Another furious rally falls short for BYU men's basketball against St. Mary's. It's so often happened this season, Jerem, that the Cougars dig themselves a deep hole and then scrap and fight like crazy to get back in it and just didn't have enough to get it done. But it's a lot to ask when you're down by 26, even to get to within three but it was in the late. final minute. But it's it just, seconds. Yes, yeah. just too little, too late. So ultimately, what went wrong for BYU last night, and why did they fall short against St. Mary's? First off, I appreciate the fight of BYU to 100%. get it down to three. But I, what I don't appreciate is getting down by 26. Like, what went wrong is that BYU had no flow on offense. A uh, lot of one-on-one. St. Mary's got BYU out of its stuff, which they're fifth in de- defensive efficiency. They're fantastic. They guard you on ball well. They help. They contest offensively. They're super crisp. They're going to get at the rim. They got at the rim the first couple of shots. They missed a few threes to start, but ultimately they jump out like 19-8. to eight. They're up by 26, five minutes into the second half. It really felt deflating and defeating. And BYU, like in Moraga, made a comeback to make it interesting in the end. And certainly against Dayton, BYU was down 23-1 and in the Bahamas. It was like, hey, we've seen a BYU team do this. That wasn't Dayton last night. That was, uh, you know, top five seed St. Mary's in the w, uh, NCAA tournament. So it was tough. Alex Dukas is getting wide open threes. Aiden Mahaney is getting at the rim. But what really changed the game was when Dallin Hall had put had, had enough and didn't like the kind of the hand on his back from Aiden Mahaney after a play. The extended contact. And then suddenly BYU kind of got fired up. I just wish that fire had manifested itself earlier in the game in the run of play as opposed to I'm really ticked off that we're down 20 right now and this is going to come out in the form of this play right now. I think that's what happened. I think Down was upset at that. But he was more upset that BYU was down by 20 at that point in the second half. That was frustrating. Credit to the guys that, that put in the work there. Dallin Hall off the bench, Richie Saunders off the bench. Who well, I say this in the nicest way. He's such a spaz, and I love it. Like, he's so energetic. He's willing to do anything that it takes. He finishes at the rim with both hands. It's fun. Tiki Aliatiki had some of his best minutes at BYU all in his two-year uh, career so far. In this tournament, he was tremendous off the bench. Spencer Johnson continued to be that consistent three-point shoot shooter uh Shot maker, defender, Gideon George did great as well. Those guys were probably toast at the end. That play where Dallin Hall kind of falls down, he's just tired because he, BYU went with the group that came back. Rarely do you sub in the guys that got you the deficit. Um, you keep those guys in. And BYU was super tired. Too big of a hole. If that hole is 18 and BYU gets fired up, like maybe BYU actually comes back in this one. 
But, but let's give them their flowers. St. Mary's really good, man. They're really good. All three games within seven, one, six, seven in this this year. Tough to beat a team three times unless you're a really good team like St. Mary's. So credit to BYU for coming back, but I just really wish BYU hadn't dug that kind of hole. And unfortunately, it was too big of a hole to get out of. I'll tell you where it went wrong for BYU last night. The fact that they had to play on Monday. When is Monday ever a good thing for BYU? I mean, traditionally. what It's just brutal for BYU based on the choice that the school makes and the athletic department makes, which yeah. we support, yeah. to not do anything on Sunday. This tournament is not set up for BYU to succeed, although they have accommodated BYU by saying, hey, we're going to play Thursday, Friday, Saturday. We'll all take a break on Sunday, and then we'll come back and play Monday and Tuesday, which is awesome that the West Coast Conference did that. Fury's had Monday wins. like I, They've had I, them. I, I feel you. I just think it just, there are going to be Monday games in the Big 12. Like, there's going to be some late and games. I, and I Mondays. will go into those games yeah. not expecting much. It's tough. Well, we well, might not tur- expect much in any format, game. A tournament format's a little bit different than even a home game on a Monday. Like, if it's a road game on a Monday, yikes. Super rough for BYU, especially yeah. in the Big 12. Well, the women lost both Monday games as well, by the way. Yeah, okay, so you're saying the Sabbath day observance is affecting BYU on Mondays. That and BYU had to play two games on Friday and Saturday. That was BYU's choice by being the five seed. Hundred <laughs> percent. You know what I mean, <laughs> right? That, not, I'm not making excuses yeah. for BYU that they had to play two games starting on Friday, but it just going into Monday, I was like, oh man, I do not like this scenario for the Cougars. And even in the 1920 season, right before COVID hit, BYU was the two seed. They're coming out that dramatic win against Gonzaga. Beat Pepperdine the next week. BYU did not play until monday and scored 50 points and lost to st mary's only give up 51 though <laughs> it's just like, you can still win there. why yeah. why 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 yeah Mon- monday just feels like a lot to overcome for byu especially start practicing on sunday then if we want to win on monday that's not going to happen i though. know that's but it's a choice gonna happen but you could practice monday morning if you're playing in a big monday game and it's home in provo like you could well you could get something going they always do that anyway they have a shoot run they oh, have a shoot man. run every game day at your not in your home gym is what I'm making for a big Monday in the Big Twelve. Like if there's a big Monday game for BYU in Provo, they can practice in their own gym and be ready by Monday night. It's not the case down here for them. And you're off site, you come here, you play two games. It just it feels like a they lot to ask. They chose not to come on site, right? Because they could have been here for 30 minutes. I don't know about the morning. particulars of that. They, I, I don't my know. understanding is they could have practiced for 30. I think St. Mary's is just better than BYU. I, I don't think it was anything bigger than that. Well, yeah, there's that, too. I mean, <laughs> there's that, too. Really St. Mary's is awesome, and then you throw in Mondays. So there's a lot of things working against BYU. I'm not huge on, like, uh, yeah, I see what you're saying. You're saying outside of the game itself, like, what other things can go into this? Hey, this is a choice BYU makes. you gotta, you got to do it, and you got to – it's an advantage that you get, um, you know, with, with being attached to the church, and you get uh, access to the certain athletes associated that want to come to BYU. But it can be a disadvantage in that you're not getting in a regular practice. Well, Skylar Halper brought up a good point last week, and he said, BYU's got to beat a bunch of three or make a bunch of three pointers. They're going to beat St. Mary's. You start the game one for eight, not great. Yeah. That also play, play better is what points, went so. wrong. Yeah. Okay, topic two. Can you make a, a good case for BYU to get into the NIT? Absolutely. It starts and ends with engagement by fans and what's going to draw eyeballs. Yeah, that it, it begins there for BYU. Their metrics. Is the fan base engaged with this their team? Their metrics are point? okay. They say they're not, Jerem, but we all know that if BYU's in the NIT, they're going to watch because that's what BYU fans do. So as frustrated as they're like, oh, please, end the season. Mercy. Stop it. If BYU gets into the NIT, you will all be watching. That's what's going to happen, and there will be – Better engagement for BYU than a lot of the other teams that are in uh, in the NIT. It will attract eyeballs. Tell me, let's say Utah Valley doesn't win their conference tournament championship and they get an auto bid into the NIT. You're telling me BYU at Utah Valley would not be an intriguing matchup in the NIT for the NIT selection committee to sell tickets, to draw ratings on a Monday or a Tuesday or Wednesday, whatever, hopefully not a Monday game. Okay. This is played on Sunday at this point. <laughs> Utah, or even Utah State, they're one of the last four teams in. Utah State doesn't get in. Oh, my gosh. Cougars, Aggies didn't get to play this season. They're going to play in Logan in the NIT in the first round. It sounds like the worst thing ever for BYU. It, 
They don't care what's <laughs> bad for BYU. They just want, like, yeah. BYU wants another opportunity to play. Speaking of the players, talked to a bunch of the players last night. They obviously want another opportunity to not finish the season on a loss. Right. Well, unless you win the NIT you're, or the NCAA tournament, okay. you're finishing To not finish the season on a loss like that to St. Mary's. Like, they want to play like in the that. postseason. Yeah. They want to play in the postseason. Sure, and that's the only They're a draw. NIT. They're a draw. Yeah. It's Ken Palm 75. There have been teams that have had worse Ken Palm ratings getting the NIT in recent years. And the net rating is right on the bubble. Like, it's probably not going to happen, but there's absolutely a case because BYU is a national brand. And it would be a potentially fun matchup with an in-state foe. I'm off the next three days, so I'll get out my opinions here on the show right now. Please I, do. I don't think BYU is going to make the NIT. Neither do I, but there's a case. <sighs> I don't think there's a good case. Uh, BYU just wasn't good enough, and, and obviously this season the guys uh, gave it a good effort. Unfortunately, weren't as, as good as they were hoping. Beginning of the season, we knew there were going to be some issues. Unfortunately, those were equal to or worse issues uh, in some cases on the court, obviously, with BYU. Young group that hopefully we look back, I've said this before, like 18 and 19 in football where BYU goes 7 and 6, 7 and 6, and then 20, 21, 22, it's like, okay, this team went to 11, 10, 8 wins and like took a step forward. Um, hopefully in basketball we say the same thing in the next couple of years where it was like, oh, Dallin Hall and Foos and Atiki and, and uh, Rich Saunders and so on, Jackson Robinson, that that group grows together and that in, say, two years sniffs or maybe makes the tournament and we go, the cost was that stinky – 22-23 season, that's the hope. So we'll see. Um, yeah, I, I I hope if BYU gets in the NIT, I, I hope the guys are up for it, right? I, frankly, I'm not sure they were up for it last year, but being at home a couple of games, they won a few, and that was great, and we're one game away from uh, New York. But uh, knowing that the Orleans awaits them uh, down the road should they make a run, that's certainly not as enticing as it used to be going to Madison Square Garden. All right, a couple of notes. Our wins against Creighton, Dayton, and two times against LMU – enough to impress the committee those are the best wins that BYU has on the rest two and 11 in quad one and two not great okay. so you've got two quad one wins and then you have four quad three and quad four lists if they get in great if the if they don't i think it's okay too it's yeah it's it's just tough this year was tough secondly the last two times BYU did not make the nit coaching changes has happened in provo how about that yeah i I don't think there's a case for getting rid of Mark there's Pope not, after this there's year. There's not. I'm just saying, like, it's, these seasons do not happen often. If you don't get into the yeah. NIT, there's it's a, a high standard here. It's a bad season. There's a high right? standard with BYU basketball. And the last two yeah. times it didn't happen, there were coaching changes because of that standard. 05 and 19. Yeah. But I don't, I'm with you. I don't think that, no. Oh, Mark Pope, if he wants to stay, he's going to stay. Yeah. Like there's there's too much that he's done in the first four years. Right? And there are too the much. schools that have courted Mark probably every year at BYU. Yeah, I don't, I don't disagree yep. with that either. Our question of the day, what is your case for BYU to get an invitation to the National Invitation Tournament? The Palangi Kalani answers on Twitter. BYU's case is one that reigns supreme. Fanny's in the seats, <laughs> home or away, and eyeballs on the screen. In other words, money, money, money. That is the case for BYU. That's what I was getting at. If they're playing an in-state foe, whether it's in Orem or, you, or Logan or wherever, it's close, BYU fans will be there. But it's a lose-lose for BYU in that situation to me. There's not a lot to gain. What if you win? What if you win that game? Does it salvage anything? Then no. you got 20 wins on the season. No, it doesn't. Number okay. eight, men's volleyball host number 15, Ohio State, starting Friday at 9 Eastern time on BYU TV and the app. The boys are back in town. They've been away for a month. Well, welcome back. Up next, Jerem goes one-on-one -on -one with BYU head basketball coach Mark Pope. How does he assess where it all went wrong last night? And does he think the Cougars are headed to the postseason? This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Bodyguards, protection for a life worth living. BYU Food to Go's convenient location at 2191 North Canyon Road in Provo makes bringing popular BYU foods to your next event easy. Everything's ready when you need it at the drive and load pickup. You drive in and they load no matter the weather and stop in the on-site creamery for great BYU chocolate milk and ice cream. BYU Food to Go, bringing campus to your table. Call for details, 
If you're looking to build your brand awareness and increase market share as BYU moves into the Big 12, this is the place, BYU, BYU Athletics. Athletics. We can provide the tools you need to make sure your company is seen and heard. BYU Athletics is where you can align your products and services with loyal fans that cheer for our Cougars. And they can also help your business win. Learn more about what a partnership with BYU Athletics and your company will look like. After all, this is the place. Email sponsorship at byu.edu today. When my grandfather started this company in 1947, he couldn't have envisioned what we would ultimately become. We realized that our value to our customers is that we will be there day after day, year after year, doing whatever we need to to find solutions to the challenges that they face. We are committed to be honestly better in all that we do, in every opportunity that we have to serve our customers. On the season premiere of Relative Race. What in the world are we about to do? This is crazy. It is all unreal. It was a um, bowl of emotions. I'll never forget this moment. <laughs> Everything that I was missing, I really did feel like I got that when I hugged them. We are live in the Studio Orleans. This is your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play. -play. I'm Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. Okay, what happened last night? Why the deficit? What's the case for BYU in the NIT? I talked to Mark Pope after last night's game. All right, Coach, tough one tonight. Uh, first 25 minutes, they, they go up by 26. What kind of happened during that part of the game that allowed them to get that kind of lead? Well, they're a good team, um, and their, their pace of play is... Uh, is good uh, for them and it's a little disruptive to the way the game feels and they're uh, you know a veteran group that's been doing the same thing for a long time and and um, we were man we were really trying to find ourselves uh, guys are really trying to find themselves emotionally um, and that happens sometimes and it usually doesn't take that long sometimes it does sometimes you're playing a great opponent and they can just like keep sucking the energy out of the gym and sucking out of the energy out of the gym and um, that's why they're good. They're a good team. You get it down to four with about 53 seconds left, three with 32. At what point did you believe, hey, we might actually do this? Because you, you did it down 23 against Dayton. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, we cut it, you know, when we were bouncing around at 15, you know, we we're talking about guys were five points away from this being a winnable game. And, and um, you know, I, I think that, you know, we spend a lot more time, you know, sometimes you scoreboard watch and it can be really, um, it can be really, um, deceiving and so um, it was the energy on the court uh, was different and when the energy changed the energy changed and we sustained it for 11 minutes and um, so when the energy changed um, was when we we're like okay this is finally like we've we finally got to us and and um, and um, so I think as soon as we felt the energy change, we're like okay man we're, we're actually this is this is who we are um, but we just couldn't get over the hump, and, and that's what happens. It's a credit to St. Mary's. Uh, the, you know, they're a top 25 team and a top 10 Ken Palm team, and they're really, really good. And, and um, we just um, we're not that yet, but, but we're, we're headed that direction. Dallin and Richie uh, both come off the bench, combined for 20, and we're in during that stretch where you come back. How would you describe what they meant to this game? Yeah, I thought Dallin was great. I thought Richie was great. I thought Atiki gave us a massive lift. Um, you know, uh, I thought Noah gave us a little bit of life in the second half. I thought Gideon finally kind of found himself down down the end. Um, but but um, you know, those those young guys, um, you know, um, that that young group is is um, man. They've they've uh, taken some real hits this year, and they've accomplished some really great things this year. And uh, mostly, what they've done is put a ton of experience uh, in their pocket and. You know, they've learned so much that they, we, we, we dipped our toe, especially towards the end of the season, understanding what the cost of winning actually looks like and what it feels like and how it is. And the next step for us is can we take that and can we make it something that's so familiar to us that we can get there emotionally on call. And um, I think that's, that this young group, you know, those guys that were in the game, I think Jackson Robinson f felt that for the first time uh, towards the end of the season. Certainly Atiki is... He's wired that way. Um, 
I do think we have a nucleus of young guys that that um, have a chance to really grow into something special. You played on Friday. You, you win Friday, Saturday, get to Monday. How would you describe the run that this team made in this tournament? Um, well, you know, when we're talking about growth, I was really proud of the growth. You know, I think about the LMU series and the first time we go down to LA and we get smoked, and the second, you know, the second time I think the t team had made tremendous strides until we beat them soundly at home without their starting center, who was probably the most impactful player when we were in LA, and then here on a neutral floor. Uh, to beat them soundly with their starting center. It's just a microcosm of how these guys have grown. I'm super proud of them. I mean, they, they've they grown. You know, we've taken we've taken external hits. We've taken internal hits. And these guys have refused to stop. And um, it speaks to their character. And I, I'm super proud of the way that they've represented BYU. Um, and uh, we're going to really miss Rudy and G. Uh, but the, the rest of this crew is... is um, is pretty battle tested and super hungry to get better and, and um, you know, still has a, a bunch of years left in the tank and it's going to grow into something special. In your mind, what's the case for an NIT bid? All right, guys. I mean, I have, uh, like, we're not thinking past St. Mary, so I have no idea. We'll see. We'll see. That'll all work itself out. I don't think anybody cares what I have to say anyway. In 2019, I think BYU said, hey, we don't play in anything but the NIT. Is that still the policy? It's no CIT or CBI. I don't. I mean, guys, we're trying to we're trying to win a game, so you guys figure all that out. Uh, how would you describe what being in the WCC meant to BYU these 12 years? Um, I think it's been really special. Uh, I think it's a great league. It's a great basketball league. The league has grown incredibly over those 10 years. It's it's been it's been really unbelievable to watch. Going from a team that you know maybe would have somebody jump into the top 25 to a, to, a, to a league that was perennially had the number one team in the country, and and um, this year I think there were stretches where six or seven teams were in the top hundred, and and um, so we've been really uh, I think BYU as whole has been really fortunate to be in this league, and especially basketball. It's a great basketball league, and um, it's been it's been a great uh, place of growth for us. It's been a super humbling experience for us. Um, uh, it's been an incredible learning ground for us, and, and um, hopefully we can take everything we've learned here and apply it as quickly as possible so we can be, um, you know, we can grow into our next monstrous task in the Big 12. What were some of the highlights of this year in your mind? Well, you think about, uh, you know, you think about the, the low-hanging fruit, you think about uh, special wins. Uh, Creighton was a special win. Um, at the time, Utah at home was a special win just because we, we, we were going through much, through so much. Uh, you know, the Dayton comeback was really, really special. It was, uh, it was kind of the defining feature of this team all year long that um, we could play really bad, but we weren't going to stop competing. Um, uh, you know, uh, this kind of run through this tournament, senior night was really special. Um, so I think about that, but really what I think about is I think about, uh, you know, I think about Rudy and I think about where Rudy started and where he ended. And, you know, I don't know if I've seen a player transform as much as he has during the course of the season. I think about Gideon and what he's meant to, what he's meant to our community. Um, you know, there's some people that would like things to, you know, I, I don't know what some people want, but like, what a gift he has been to our university and our community in terms of like, teaching us about the world and give us an opportunity to serve the world and teaching us about loving people and and him coming and competing and sacrificing for this team and him growing as a person and a player and um, he's just been a gift to BYU and um, so I think about each of these young guys and the you know the the fires that they were thrown into and how they kept responding over and over again and I think about um, you know the future that is that is uh, incredibly exciting for for this group. Um, it's not an easy season for us. Not an easy season at all. We knew that going in that it was going to face a ton of challenges. And Gideon and Rudy knew going in that we were way too small and new and young. Um, but I don't think there's a single guy in our locker room that's not really proud of the growth these guys have undergone and and super encouraged and exciting about. Um, what we're going to do in the future. So I think all that is is all the stuff that I love so much about this year. And that future could be a couple days away, perhaps a couple of weeks. We'll see. Um, in the Big 12, what does the offseason look like in the next couple of weeks? 
Well, we got to get back to work. We got to get better. We got to get a lot better. Um, we know that. We, we know how daunting this task is, and we know that it's going to be a long term project, and uh, we're not scared of it. Um, uh, we're humble. We understand that, that you know, that we have, you know, we're, 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 we're going to be transported to the base of Mount Everest, and, and uh, you know we're going to get tortured along the way, and but, but, you know we're we're a team of faith and belief, and and um, we can see past uh, today to a future that we're chasing. It's going to be really exciting. You know any good Sherpas for that climb? Well, that's our job. Thanks, Mark. Okay, thanks, guys. Mark Pope with Jerem Jordan on BYU Sports Nation. Obviously, I mean, it, you don't want to think about anything but the game immediately following it, but the next thing would be potentially the NIT or your season's over. So I'm glad you asked the question. Sure, yeah, and uh, I get that he didn't want to talk about it in that moment, but, yeah, we, we talked about the case for or against BYU or whatever. We didn't say against, but, yeah, it'd be nice if BYU could make the NIT. Sure, uh, but if this is how it ends, I, hey, it, it was a tough season and you look uh, forward to the off season. Can BYU get a leg up on the next season by getting ready? If it's not in the NIT, if that's the case, I would almost prefer that because BYU's got a lot of work to do. Wow. Yeah, I mean, what a, I'm trying to define this season. <laughs> Without saying the word up and down or roller coaster? Yes. I, is, is, there, is there anything else that you can describe it as the, other than a roller coaster? Because that, that is the best way I can just explain it. I'm excited about the challenge that's ahead, like Mark was talking about, and certainly BYU's got to get better. BYU's got to get two or three players better than anyone they had on the roster last year. And maybe those are in development, like a Dallin Hall and so on. Like, Dallin's going to be a baller. Right? Hey, I like what I saw from Dallin and Richie. And Atiki and Fu, like Foos. Yeah, Foos kind of struggled here at times in this tournament. Yeah, remember, but, he's a sophomore this but year. But he's a sophomore. Like, once we get these guys, juniors and seniors... Exciting. But I don't like the idea of just always looking towards the future. It's like, what about right now? Why are you ignoring right now? Next year, BYU needs to bring in a couple of transfers who changed the program in a positive way. They need to be better than what BYU did last year. Uh, calling all 6'11 plus big men. Uh, BYU, BYU, bas BYU basketball would love to converse with you uh, because they, they need some size for well, hopefully sure. Hopefully NIL money's not three fifty. <laughs> okay, BYU baseball is in St. George to play Utah Tech today. You can listen to the game at eight Eastern on the BYU Radio app. Up next, what new BYU quarterback Keaton Slovis loves most about the BYU offense so far? This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Dexter is a full-service law firm offering a wide range of legal services. Since 1995, we have helped more than 20,000 Utahns both to navigate life's challenges and to make the most of life's opportunities. From personal injury to business law and from adoption to bankruptcy, we are passionate about shouldering your burdens. To learn more about scheduling a no-obligation consultation, visit DexterLaw.com. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork offers a large inventory of Ford vehicles, including a selection of cars and trucks, providing a range of transportation choices. From the Ford Fusion sedan and the Edge crossover SUV to a range of pickups, including the F-150. Each product line comes with options to enhance performance, comfort, and safety. Think Ford. Think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. Before I was a coach at BYU, or before I was even a player, I was a BYU fan. We've got great energy as a team, but we have even better energy because of our fans, and it's absolutely magical. When you hear the crowd roar, that makes it more exciting, more of an adrenaline rush. The roar of the crowd, you can feel it on the floor, you can feel that energy, and it's unlike anywhere else in the country. BYU sports, it's all about the fans. 
Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. Follow the show on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and TikTok. Alongside Jerem Jordan, I am Spencer Linton. Let's whip it. The Cougar Whip Round presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. BYU football began spring practice yesterday. Keaton Slovis said he likes how much the offense throws the rock. And also said this about the BYU receivers. The receivers and everyone know the offense so well. And coaches have been here for a while. Um, it's been established. Like, it's not like you need to go look at the playbook to ask play. You kind of just ask a guy a question, they know it. So uh, the receivers probably know the offense better than any receiver core I've ever been around. Um, so that's really nice, and they know it really well. So after, you know, maybe after a play, we weren't sure you can go talk to them. Um, you can't trust their input. Obviously, some receivers, you can't always do that. But um, I think here, they really know what they're doing. Oh, more than 2019 USC, huh? With a couple of NFL guys. I like that. Uh, what do you make of this comment? Uh, that the receivers are who we thought they were, which is really good in experience. Cody Epps, Keanu Hill, Chase Roberts leading the charge. The big three. This is what I expect to hear from Keaton Slovis when he's talking about those three and the guys that are coming into that room. Yeah, I, I, I'm happy that it's status quo but this is exactly what i expect from keaton slovis yeah that's great and uh you know hopefully that builds some confidence some rapport with him because certainly those three need to combine for like two thousand of his uh three thousand yards this year let's go you know what I mean? hopefully isaac rex has like 700 plus there you go uh so, tomorrow the university of colorado board of regents has scheduled a special executive session board meeting to discuss legal advice on a specific matter and an athletics update on the Pac-12. Whoa. What's the chance the Buffaloes are the first to make the jump to the Big 12, Jam? Maybe this week? I, I, this week doesn't feel like that. They're probably just going to discuss where they're at. But uh, I, I, it's not going to be one team. It'll be a pair or a group of four, it feels like, maybe the four corners or whatever. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's happening this week. They'll just... Here's where we're at, and it's not looking great. Nothing is going to happen until we all find out what the new media deal is for the Pac-12. Yep. When that information becomes available, then everybody can decide what they want to do. But I talked to somebody last night who works in the Pac-12 offices, who works closely with some of these people that are putting together this deal. And I was told that they are anticipating that Apple and Amazon are putting together the final terms for a package that's going to be available for streaming, and then we'll see about the other TV networks. But they expect that television. Let's they go. expect that sometime next week. So maybe next week we'll know what the Pac-12 deal is, and then we can start to see the pieces fall into place. Okay. K-State recruiting had a fun uh, oh, re this, reaction this is, to the news from Reddit College Football. This is a gem. And this is the actual sanctioned uh, blue check marked account, is it not? For it's got the blue check mark. Well, anybody can buy the blue check mark now for eight bucks oh, a Twitter month. Oh, it's blue. Never mind. At K State Recruit, that's <laughs> fake for sure. Okay, then. Yeah, Pac 12, everybody's in there. Everybody's this around is, the gravestone in the Pac 12. This is from uh... the Flash on CW, I believe. Yeah. That's hilarious. I, please, please, all of my friends and family, do this when I die. That photo. Six, 16 in people front of gathered my grave. around your grave? Yeah. On your like, tombstone, yeah. yeah. Don't be sad. Be uh, be happy. Just that don't it's happened. put Pac-12 on Jerem's gravestone. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> Big 12. Yeah. Big 12. You'll see the tattoo. Uh, Kyle Collinsworth tweeted this photo of a random guy I love in this. Japan wearing a BYU sweatshirt who said he didn't know what BYU was. <laughs> Is that disappointing or impressive? <laughs> it's impressive that that dude probably went to I don't know the flea market and found a random BYU sweatshirt and was like, "That's cool. That looks I'm cool. Gonna, I'm going to buy it." In in um. No, it's not Japanese, South Korean, but in Korea, Byu is a person's name? Yes. Often uh, a male, a very popular male, male name. Male name in South Korea. Yes. I, I see that in Twitter. Yes, um, because quite, we follow BYU. Quite a bit. Yeah, looking for BYU stuff. One time I was in Puerto Penasco, Rocky Point, Mexico. There was a bunch of stained glass, and they had a BYU stretch wilo oh, yeah. that I bought. Yep. And have in my house. It's cool. I love it. I love the random things that you find in, in Asia. Like that sweatshirt, like... I walked into this little tiny little store, just hole in the wall store, and they had all this like authentic Nike gear that I'm, sh and I was like, "What? Where'd you get this?" And she's like, "Oh, there were, there were small mistakes in it, so we got it all shipped to us." But like, oh, buy cool. all these like authentic Nike hoodies from like all these major programs, and they have no idea. It was like Falcons, Super Syrac Bowl champs, no, Syracuse and Duke <laughs> and North Carolina. I was, yeah, no BYU though for me. So at least you had that in Brazil. 
Up next, I go one-on-one with BYU women's basketball assistant coach Lee Kamard following the Cougars' tough loss to Gonzaga. Does he believe the women will receive an invite to the 64-team NIT? This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Introducing the Truck for Adventure. The all-new 2022 Nissan Frontier doesn't compromise on power or comfort. This mid-sized truck was redesigned to incorporate the latest technology and designs for safety, comfort, and convenience. Plus, with up to 6,700 pounds of towing capacity and best-in-class horsepower, it's rugged enough for adventure and still safe enough to transport all your favorite people. Where's your new Frontier? You'll find it at Tim Dowling Nissan Southtown in South Jordan. Utah is a special place. Our communities, the people, the history, there is no place quite like Utah. At Siegfried and Jensen, we're honored to say that we are from Utah. We live here, work here, and when someone is injured, we're proud to say we've helped a neighbor when they've needed it most. We know Utah. At Siegfried and Jensen, we're here for you. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. Today was a great day. You're going to feel the energy of all these volunteers. I'm excited to get out into the world and see who else is making good. And you're going to meet some of the most amazing people. And we will all just lift each other up. What we do is we create memories for families. And you realize just how good people are. It does take a village. It's definitely been a journey. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation, live from the Orleans Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada. Following yesterday's BYU women's basketball loss to Gonzaga in the semifinals, assistant coach Lee Kamard spoke with me. I asked him, is the NIT a possibility? Another tournament, if not? And what's the number one priority to help this program get better? One-on-one -on -one with Lee Kamard. Lee, we're going to take a big picture look at the season and what's ahead for BYU women's basketball in just a moment, but let's stay in this moment. Uh, you just lost to Gonzaga in the semifinals. What was ultimately the difference in today's game that allowed the Zags to hold on and beat BYU? Uh, I mean, probably the most glaring thing was just the turnovers, right? I mean, it's been our Achilles heel all year. That's the thing, statistically speaking, that sticks out the most and probably was uh, a big factor in the game. Early on, um, especially in the first half, I think 22 of the 31 that they score were either second chance points or fast break baskets, some of those being off of turnovers. And that's disappointing because that was an emphasis, you know, coming into the game. Also credit to the Zags for um, just putting a straight whooping on us today. You know, they, they took us out of almost everything. And when we had head-to-head -head matchups or one-on-one -on -one type stuff, most of the time they won those those matchups and, and they brought it today and it's a little disappointing because we played so well friday and saturday collectively uh and as individuals um but but they're a championship team and credit to them how much does today's performance by byu do you feel fall on maybe some tired legs some tired emotions after having already played two games against a team that hasn't played nine days sure no doubt that that, that probably was a factor Historically, Mondays are horrible for uh, us. Uh, we, we take Sunday off, and we're able to talk through some game plan stuff and, and walk through some stuff, but to just sit around all day, and it's even when it's practice for us, it's not our favorite thing. We try not to schedule Monday games. 
and uh, we haven't had great success on Mondays, and so that that, that was a factor. But it, honestly, like they they beat us to the ball. They 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 made better decisions. We saw a couple of things um, from our team that we haven't really seen this year uh, with good intentions, right? Um, and, and credit to Zags. They made some adjustments early and in the second half that caused us some problems and it took a little while to figure out, you know, but, but, but in the meantime, got us in a little hole. How would you sum up the West Coast Conference tournament overall, beating Pepperdine, then surviving just to knock down, drag out battle against San Francisco, and of course the game today? Yeah, I mean, we, the last time we played both Pepperdine and San Francisco, we had suffered defeat. So to come back and rebound from that against those teams, it's exciting. The, the manner in which we did it was good. Collectively, it was strong. Had some good individual performances in, in those games. Um, and then to come in here and really just get a, a got spanked today. And uh, it's good for them to see that, good for them to feel that as a championship quality team. Uh, very sound machine that just runs itself. And, uh, you know, but saw some good things down here in Vegas. Lee, 16 and 16 overall in Amber Whiting's first season. The WNIT has expanded to 64 teams. BYU's got a net of 104. You did play some better basketball in your conference tournament until today. Do you feel like you're a team that has a resume that is worthy of being in the WNIT? Sure. I, I mean, I, I looked at some of the teams they got in last year, and I think we're right there on the cusp. I hope we get a play because I don't want that to be – how we end the season, you know, as far as the performance. So I'm hoping we get another game. I know it'll be close, though. I felt like if we could win today, I felt like we would win tomorrow. But with winning today, we would have been for sure in the NIT. Um, so look forward to it. Hopefully there's a chance and we get to play again and, and get this bad taste out of our mouth. Is the women's basketball invitation of the WBI on the radar at all for this BYU team? No, I mean, as far as I know, from what I, my understanding, we're only going to play in the NCAA tournament or the NIT going forward. And, and uh, I think that's a good thing. That's kind of what the expectations are for our program. And uh, unless somebody heard differently, that's what I think will be the case going forward. I know this is a tough question because you're processing, okay, the entire regular season in the conference tournament here, but based on the 32 games that you've played, what will you, will you remember most about this team? Or what's the identity of this team after those 32 games? It's a young team. Um, saw some growth from a lot of girls. Um, and I can't believe the season that Lauren Gusson's had so far. I mean, I knew she was going to have a good year, but unbelievable uh, season for her. Saw some growth from everybody. Um, uh, turnovers are going to haunt me, you know, and something that we have to clean up either going forward or going into next year, and it has to be a focus. Uh, but overall, good collective group that, that has, has had some big moments. I mean, Washington State just won the Pac-12. We beat them early in the season, uh, and that trip to Hawaii will be a memory. And then how we kind of came together in the early rounds of this tournament is good, um, but with a lot of improvement. You know, the expectation at BYU and for Coach Whiting is this isn't enough. You know, that, that, that performance today, as a program is not enough and and that's how we feel and that's what the girls know that the expectation is and we just have to improve collectively as a unit as a staff all together as a program overall and uh and we don't have a whole lot of time so let's get better lee you yourself played on some ncaa tournament teams you know what it takes the type of consistency in that level of play a aside from turnovers that you want your team to clean up what else has to happen for this specific BYU program to get to that NCAA tournament level we get we got that consistency that you're talking about we can't I, I mean I can always count on the girls to be focused uh, with a Utah or Gonzaga on the horizon but it's it's some of those smaller games that uh, the intention has to be there the focus has to be there um, just the consistency I, I felt like at least Overall, for the season, our inputs as a team, as a program, they were solid. Um, and uh, now that we got a little bit more experience under our belt, that will help. Um, <clears throat> and so just the consistency, you know, I would say. Lee, thanks for the time. Always tough to do these interviews, but we appreciate you and uh, hope to see you in the WNIT. Sure. We're ex excited for it, hopefully. Thanks, Spence. Lee Kamard. Again, those interviews are so tough. Like, I, so I appreciate the coaches when they come out and do that. You don't feel like it, but they give you some insight into what they're feeling and experiencing. Yeah. And I, this is the big leagues. This is D one. Let's go. 
I appreciate it. I yeah. forgot until uh, about 10 minutes before that interview with Lee yesterday uh, and, uh, that the NIT had expanded to 64 teams. I was like, oh, yeah. They have a better right. shot then, yeah. 64 Men, teams in that. Men's 32, right? So 128 teams on the women's side are going to play in either the NCAA tournament or the NIT. BYU's got a shot to get in the WNIT. Okay. We'll see. Uh, they'll probably have to play on the road, but there's there's a decent shot to get in there. And they are a young team. And based on what we saw this year, I, listen, I would love for Lauren Gustin to have at least one more game to try and pursue that season rebound record and make some more marks. And, and this team to kind yep. of gel a little more together because they're very they're still really young. Yeah, great recruiting class coming in. Like we're not just blowing smoke; <laughs> they're going to be really good. Yeah. If you missed any of this year's West Coast Conference tournament interviews, shows, games, you want to watch some deep blues, you can find them on BYUSN. Dot com or the BYU TV app. Up next, this week's Top 5 Tuesday looks fondly back at the top moments from this year's West Coast Conference Basketball Tournament. What's number one? This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Trio Orem Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life when you live at Trio. Less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TrioOrem.com. Every day, I help an animal walk again. I believe that having special needs animals has brought an extra layer of richness to the fabric of our family. Not many people take in these special needs guys, but in the end, they're the best ones. It's unbelievable. It's like his disability has disappeared. Every step just proves to me that these dogs can get through anything. No kid is that stubborn, right? Bennett, let go of the rod! Never! This kid is that stubborn. We're the Scroogiest Scrooges ever. Hey, people change. Put that stubborn to work. Don't quit, sir. Yes, yes sir. Progress. We oh, did it. Right. I did it. Oh, so much for that plan. <laughs> This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Nation is on demand. Download the free BYU TV and BYU Radio apps or listen to the podcast and subscribe, rate, and review. Top 5 Tuesday now from the West Coast Conference Tournament features the top five moments from this year's WCC tourney run for BYU men's and women's basketball. Number five, Jackson Robinson Steel and Slam versus LMU. Six minutes into the first half. Let's put the Cougars up 14-4 to in the quarterfinals. Throwdown was sweet. Robinson finished the game with 13 points and eight boards. Oh, dunk you very much, Jackson. At number four, Dallin Hall to close the half versus LMU. Three for me and none for you. Hall hit two big threes, including this one late in the half. The end of the game, three for four from beyond the arc. Number three, Lauren Gustin's 27 rebounds versus USF. She absolutely dominated the boards against the Dons. Ninth, 20 rebound game of the season. First with 10 offensive boards. Cougs won the game handily, 82-71 to get to the semifinals. At number two, enter Richie Saunders and his career high 18 points off the bench in a wild comeback win versus Portland. Richie connected on a trio of triples to spark the Cougs. ESPN Sean Farnham called him the most annoying, hateable player on BYU, <laughs> maybe in the conference. Because of his nonstop energy and effort, he's pesky, people, but he's our pesky star. Yeah, it's fast. I love it. And number one. 
Ariel Mackey Williams three point shot clock buzzer beating three to seal the win against USF. Up seven, <laughs> three thirty left. Chucking it up the step back. Get it up! That was amazing. Cougars won by 10. She went 4 of 5 from deep. She had a really nice tournament for BYU. Yeah, at that point, Nani Falatea, Emma Calvert, both fouled out on the bench, and we're all like, oh, how's BYU going to score? Like that. Like that. Yeah. That was awesome. Right there, right there. All right, uh, as we wrap up our WCC tournament coverage on BYU Sports Nation, we also wrap up our fantasy basketball season. Do we? It was we're just, just rolling them out of the NIT already? Oh, I does it carry into We're the just, does it carry into that team? If it's only like the women or the or do we or do both teams need to get know, in for it to continue? Are we, by declaring that it's over, are we saying we don't think they're making the NIT? I, I don't know. <laughs> like if both teams get in, can we should we continue? Why wouldn't we continue? If it's only they're one still team, playing do we continue? Games. If it's only one team, do we continue? I don't think uh, it really matters. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. Hey. <laughs> Semantics. I just don't like uh, Semantics. telling them they're done yet. Uh, well, I can it say that be. we're done. They could keep playing. We could be done, though. Me saying we're done has nothing to do with Obviously, them Obviously, I'm in to keep playing. <laughs> you won 280 to 274. It was actually oh. close. It was actually close. All it took was Lauren Gustin having, like, half the rebound she does in a regular yeah. game. No, uh, yeah, we wish BYU had won this tournament instead of talking about that. <laughs> uh, congratulations <laughs> on your you. six-point win. You're 12-1 you. on the I season. Appreciate it. Amazing. That's what you, uh, that's what you did in football. Yeah. Yep. You were that's 12 exactly 12 <laughs> We should end it there, oh. then. No, we should keep going. Winner take all for the whole year. <laughs> Combo of like the last week's football points plus basketball <laughs> points. <laughs> Something it's crazy. Oh, uh, see the graphic. I I won. Yeah. Do you out of the NIT? Jerem takes yeah. his title. No, we can end it here and they can still play on. <laughs> true, true, true. All right, our question of the day. What's your case for BYU men's basketball to get into the NIT? Uh, our elite voice of the day presented by PAX Healthcare Elevated. Caleb J. McCann on Instagram says, Dear NIT, you are in the entertainment business. Are you not? This team does not lose by double digits. Every game is intense. BYU's pulled up buzzer beaters, lost on daggers. We've got cougar tails. Let us in. Sincerely, Brigham. <laughs> That's a pretty good uh, pretty good poll there. Well done, Caleb. Yeah, I like that. Today's Rise and Shout Out presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Goes to BYU football. Um, practice began, therefore we, we see the Sione Vecoso 72, the SV 72 on the back of the helmet. Uh, helmets with a sticker. Certainly he is going to be remembered throughout the season and uh, honored uh, during the season in various ways. So cool to see that. And uh, he is their brother and not uh, forgotten. All love. Uh, and we're definitely thinking about the Vecoso family at this yeah. time. We also need to officially end this WCC tournament era in Las Vegas. I, honestly, I'm kind of emotional and sad. Like, very excited about the Big 12. But, like, we've been coming here since 2011. And uh, this is it, man. This yeah. is it. It's been a fun ride. WCC has been world class. Really appreciate uh, them having BYU for 12 years. It's been good. We still have softball and baseball and whatnot to play, but in terms of basketball, it was, it was a it was a good run. I wish BYU had well, a ship on this, and men's women's won three here. We we've had a hand in the tournament coverage in a way like uh, we're not going to ever have again. Yeah. We and we're, we're going to miss it. Plus. Yeah. Our thanks to today's guests, Mark Pope and Lee Kamard. Andre Duke, Devo coming up. For Jeremiah Spencer, shout out to John Fish. BYU Sports Station back at it tomorrow on Provo. Go Cougs.